31st December 1993, a New Year party was going on in Nepal's famous The Royal Casino, in which guests from different corners of the world had come to gamble. It was New Year's night, and there was a festive atmosphere, hence the Royal Casino was packed with about 200 people. Then six thieves enter here who had come as VIP guests of that casino. The security chief himself welcomes him to the casino. They have boxes of sweets in his hands and have also hidden some weapons in his coat. Since they are VIP guests, no security checking is done on them. These people bring a lot of money with them and start gambling as soon as they arrive. Then one of the thieves stands up and announces that today is New Year's Day. Today is very important for us because today is the night of happiness. The next day we are going to enter 94, so all the guests and staff here today. Dinner and drinks for all of them will be provided by us. Hearing this, all the 200 guests, staff members, and security guards present there become happy. As soon as 12 Sue in the night comes, everyone together celebrates the new year vigorously. Everything was free, so people ate and drank a lot. These thieves had brought with them boxes of sweets from the most famous shop of Kathmandu and distributed them among all the people. Because of this, people started eating to their fill. After some time, the sweets started doing their work, and one by one, all the security guards, security chief and casino manager started dozing off. They take out their weapons and lock everyone in a big hall and take out the locker key from the casino manager's pocket and reach near the safe. When the thieves open the locker, their eyes widen in amazement because it contained a total of $600 million. These thieves put all this money in bags, loaded it into a truck already parked outside, and went straight to the airport. But when people in the casino started coming to their senses, they informed the police. When the police started chasing those thieves, they jumped the truck from the river bridge into the river. After that, the police surrounded them from all sides and caught them and also confiscated the truck. When police opened the truck and saw that it was completely empty, he was shocked to know where the $600 million had gone. This story is about Kathmandu, Nepal. It was a time when terrorism wasn't at its peak, so even at that time, the airport didn't have as much security because events like 9-11 hadn't happened and security agencies didn't think that places like airports could be so dangerous for terrorism. Also, Nepal was known to be a distant destination for tourism and peace. People from nearby Ares would often visit as tourists and sometimes go to the casino for gambling adventures. At that time, in Nepal, there were quite a few large casinos where people came to gamble on events like Christmas and New Year. So casinos earned the most during these festive times. This was the era when casino owners made significant profits in dollars. In Kathmandu, Nepal, there was a famous casino called the Royal Casino. Some thieves discover information about this casino's earnings, including when it had the most money. They also learn that in this casino, the highest amount of money is present on New Year's Eve, kept in a safe in the basement for 24 hours because banks are closed the next day due to the holiday. During these 24 hours, the thieves plan to carry out the theft since it becomes challenging to steal after reaching the bank. After gathering all the essential information one by one, they begin executing their plan. In June, six thieves arrive in Kathmandu. After reaching Kathmandu, they know exactly which casino they're targeting for theft, the Royal Casino. Near this casino, they find a luxurious house available for rent. They want people in the area to believe that the residents of this upscale house are wealthy. Luckily, there was an empty bungalow nearby, and without negotiating the rent with the owner, they paid more than he asked. With the extra money, the owner was pleased. He rented the bungalow to them. Now these six people throw parties, roam around in the evening, and spend the rest of the time playing cards in the casino. However, they avoid going to the casino where they plan to commit the theft. Slowly, time passed, and so far, deliberately, none of them entered the casino. However, their focus was on every activity within the casino. By now, they had all the information about the casino, the staff count, the number of security guards, and how things functioned inside. Now, combining all this, they begin planning to loot the casino. The first phase of their planning involved gradually befriending casino staff and security guards. During this time, they wouldn't let anyone suspect that they had any connection to the Royal Casino. Yet, these thieves wanted to make them feel that these thieves wanted to make them feel that we are rich and extravagant, with plenty of money, so we casually splurge our wealth. Now, one by one, 
they started inviting casino staff to their mansion at different times, serving expensive drinks, offering lavish meals, and even presenting gifts when they left. They would emphasize the secrecy of their friendship, urging the staff not to disclose it to anyone, as this place was unknown to them. They didn't want too many people to know about them. These individuals were also regular employees, finding happiness in befriending higher-ups. They considered themselves fortunate, so they refrained from discussing personal matters with anyone. Exploiting this, the thieves invited all staff members to their mansion at different times, fostering friendships and winning their hearts. Suspicion never arose among the staff, as they were invited to parties, and in return they refrained from sharing any information about their work or the casino. If casino staff attempted to discuss work matters, the thieves politely declined, stating they had no interest in such conversations. Gradually, over time, they had built friendships with every casino staff member. The second phase of their plan was to gather inside information about the casino. To do this, they needed to enter the casino. Having already won the hearts of the staff, they started venturing into the casino after a brief gap. Since the casino staff members recognized them, they were allowed to enter without thorough checks. Inside the casino, they played normal games. When there, they would either lose or win a couple of lakhs. Upon winning, they would spend the winnings within that same casino, and to win over the staff, they would treat the staff to drinks or parties from their own side. In this way, these thieves start collecting all the information inside the casino one by one, like where the manager sits, where the safe is kept, and after befriending the manager, they slowly started asking him about the gunners and security guards. In this way, these thieves won the trust of all the staff members and started taking all types of information from them. They spent about five months doing this work. When all these people were busy planning to rob the casino, there was an empty plot near their bungalow on which a room was built, and in that room lived a single young man whose name was Satpal. Actually, this plot belonged to Satpal's father's friend, but Satpal was unemployed in the village, hence his father talked to his friend and asked him to stay in the room built on that plot in Kathmandu. So that Satpal can stay there and do some work. This plot was in a very residential area, hence her father's friend Ai, the owner of that plot, also felt that if Satpal stays there, then no one will be able to encroach or do any illegal construction on his plot, hence he gives permission to Satpal to live there. Satpal was a dull, lazy, and idle type of person. He used to sit alone in that room most of the time. He often used to watch the vehicles of those thieves coming and going outside that bungalow. Seeing them, he felt that somehow if he becomes friends with these people, he will also get a career. That's why Satpal often used to stand in front of their bungalow to make contact with them, so that their eyes fall on him. But like every time, they ignore him after seeing him. One day, by coincidence, all these thieves were partying in front of the bungalow, Intoxicated and discussing that our days are about to change, we are going to become rich very soon. Satpal had been watching them from his plot in front of the bungalow for quite some time, and the sudden talk of becoming rich caught Satpal's attention. Satpal feels that something fishy is going on here because these people rarely leave their homes, and luxurious cars from the royal casino often visit their houses. Therefore, he approaches them to have a conversation. He informs them that he overheard their conversation about their destiny changing. Satpal shares that he himself is unemployed, and if there is any job suitable for him, they should let him know so that he can also make a living. Hearing Satpal's words, the thieves get scared, thinking that maybe he got wind of their theft plan. They try to interrogate him, but so far, Satpal has no knowledge about the casino theft plan. Relieved, they assure Satpal that if there is any work for him, they will inform him, but they haven't revealed anything about the casino theft plan to Satpal so far. Whenever they meet, they exchange greetings with a simple hi or hello. By doing this, six months passed, and finally the night of December 31st arrived when they had to execute the theft. All six thieves, ready for action, reached the casino during the night. It was New Year's Eve, and many guests were present. These thieves also entered along with them. Each of these thieves had a box of sweets in their hands, and they had concealed weapons with them. Since by now, 
They had substantial information about the casino's security guards and other staff. They were allowed to enter without undergoing security checking. The chief security guard of the casino had also partied with them at their home, so he welcomed the thieves warmly. That day, he reached the casino with a lot of money. He placed his box of sweets on the table and started gambling. Just then, one of the thieves stood up and announced that today is New Year. Today is a big day for us. It is important because today is the night of happiness. The next day we are going to enter 94, so all the guests and staff present here today will have dinner and drinks from us. The casino staff and security guards will show their hospitality first. They had already seen it, because every time he won money, he used to spend it in this casino. Therefore, they also had no objection with this announcement. There was applause after the announcement. There were about 200 guests in the casino at that time. All of them were happy, and seeing the free drinks, they started drinking more. As soon as it was 12 o'clock in the night, the New Year celebration started. People started eating and drinking. He distributed the boxes of sweets among the staff and told them to feed everyone sweets on the occasion of New Year. The sweets were from the most famous shop in Kathmandu. Just looking at the box, it seemed that the sweets were very expensive. He asked to distribute these sweets among all the staff security guards and guests. There was a celebratory atmosphere, and everyone ate a lot of sweets with great enthusiasm. After some time, gradually everyone started dozing off, because now the sweets had started doing their work. So gradually, people were falling into a state of unconsciousness, and all these six thieves were sitting and watching them. They also knew that the locker had two keys, one of which was in the pocket of the casino manager, and the other key was with the security chief. The security chief was lying unconscious, and the manager was still slightly conscious. He took out the key from the manager's pocket. He had also hidden weapons in his coat. Now all the staff and security guards who were conscious told them to take all the guests here to a hall. They were put in the hall and the door was closed from outside. Now these people took two four staff members with them down to the locker. When the locker was opened, approximately $600 million were found in it. Now the problem before them was how to take so much money out of here, but there they found the bags in which they were filled and taken from the casino to the bank. When they, with the help of the staff, put that money in the bags, when he started filling, 22 bags were filled with that money. A truck was already standing outside to take these bags from here. This thief, while filling all the bags in the truck, also locked those staff members and security guards inside. After that, these people take the truck and go straight to the airport, where they had already booked a courier in the cargo of the airport, in which the truck goes. At the airport also, they had made all the settings that our sum goods will go, so no checking is done there also. And at that time, terrorism was also not at its peak, so no special checking was done at the airport. That's why smuggling, etc., used to happen here and there. At the airport, they handed over 22 bags. Their courier was already booked. They mentioned that these bags needed to be delivered to their address. Subsequently, preparing to leave with the courier receipt, the staff and guards at the casino gradually regained consciousness. Exiting through the rear gate, they started creating a commotion, leading to a call to the police. Kathmandu police promptly arrived at the Royal Casino, where people informed them that thieves had taken away all the money in a truck. While questioning on the way, the police discovered that the truck had headed towards the airport. The police quickly reached the airport, and upon arrival, the Nepali police realized that the thieves were being pursued. Deceptively, they began confusing the police by couriering the bags and immediately sitting in the truck. The truck was speeding, and the police were trailing them. Suddenly, the truck reached a bridge over a river. These individuals threw the truck into the river along with themselves. However, the police called their team surrounded them from all sides, and apprehended all six thieves. But when the truck was pulled out and checked, it was found empty. There was no money in the truck. Now the police are surprised where did all the stolen money go? Because earlier the police thought that all the thieves have been caught and the truck is also underwater. When it comes out, the money will also be confiscated. The truck. It took them more than 12 hours to get it out. Because of this, it was already the evening of the next day. When the truck was opened, the police were left wide-eyed. They could not understand that all the money, where did it go? When the police asked the thieves, they were not opening their mouths. 
be told that perhaps all the money might have been washed away in the water, but the divers told that they could not see even a single note in the water. How could it be visible? There was nothing inside the truck, and when the police interrogated them, they kept misleading the police. The police couldn't understand that if the money was gone, where did it go? While all this was going on, there was something else going on in Satpal's mind. He felt that these people were going to do something different today, so he followed them to the Royal Casino on the night of the 31st of December. He reaches there, but he does not go inside. He waits for them outside. That day he stood outside the casino for a long time, when after a while he suddenly saw a truck carrying the same six people putting some bags in it. Seeing this, he could not understand what was happening. After that, the truck left from there, and Satpal also got upset and came back to his plot. The next day, he came to know that a big theft had taken place in the casino, in which all the six thieves are caught, the truck is also caught, but the police did not get the money. He makes up his mind that these people had gone towards the airport. After that, he goes to the airport and tries to find out something at his level. He does this, but even there he does not get any specific information. After that, he comes back to his home. He too was not able to understand that thieves have been caught, trucks have also been caught, thefts have also taken place in casinos, but where did the stolen money go? He feels that he will definitely find some clue here, so he keeps a constant eye on that bungalow. After three days, he sees a postman coming to that bungalow and ringing the bell of the bungalow, but there was no one at the bungalow. So the postman starts leaving from there. But just then, Satpal reaches there and tells the postman, he says that he is their neighbor. They have just gone somewhere. When they come back, he will give them this mail and takes the mail from them. When Satpal opens it, he sees that there is a cargo slip inside it. It was written in it that the goods sent by you will reach the address given by you. So you reach the cargo center and complete your paperwork. He immediately reaches the cargo center, where he shows the slip. After that, he receives another slip, in which it is written that after 24 hours, your courier of 22 bags will be delivered to an address in Jamaica, West Indies. You will receive your goods from the cargo there. Now, after arranging tickets from here and there, he boarded a flight to Jamaica and reached Jamaica directly. After reaching there, he has an address and a receipt from the cargo company. When he went to that address and looked, the address was of a house in which an elderly man lived. He asks the old man if any courier of his cargo has come, so the old man refused, saying that no courier has come yet. After that, Satpal started living near this house, then one day a postman comes there too. He tells the old man that if you have received any item from your cargo, please receive it from the airport. Here, Satpal cleverly receives that slip and goes to the airport with it, where he goes to the airport and shows the slip, and in return he is given 22 bags. Since then, no one knows the whereabouts of Satpal. Here, six thieves were in the custody of Nepal police. Even after a lot of efforts by the police, these thieves were not ready to open their mouths. The police told him that if he told the truth, his punishment would be reduced. Finally, it all breaks down and they tell us that we have couriered all the money to Jamaica. When they were asked why they did this, they said that we thought that if any one of us survived, he would go to Jamaica and receive this money, and after serving the sentence, we would also reach Jamaica, but it was a coincidence that six of us were caught. He told that a man named Satpal lived in our neighborhood. When the police went and checked, the man was missing for three days after the theft. After that, no one knew about him. All six thieves felt sad to know that we did all the hard work and someone else was having fun. With this, this story ends here. So friends, how did you like our story today? Please tell in the comments. See you again with a new video. Goodbye until then.